We are people of the ocean. The Pacific Ocean surrounds us. It provides our food, our transport and our livelihoods. But our islands are vulnerable. We are exposed to geological dangers like volcanic eruptions, earthquakes and tsunamis. But we're also affected by weather-related hazards such as cyclones, droughts and floods. These hazards often lead to disasters that make the challenges we already face much worse. Climate change has also increased our challenges. Projections show that we will experience changes to our climate that can bring even harsher disasters. We will see more extreme temperatures and rainfall. Climate change is also leading to a rise in the sea level and is also making our ocean more acidic. The Framework for Resilient Development in the Pacific an integrated approach to address climate change and disaster risk management provides guidance to help make our development more resilient to disasters and climate change. This helps us to be better prepared and enable us to recover more quickly. We can build our resilience by integrating actions to address climate change and disaster risks into all sectors such as health, culture, education, water and sanitation, social assistance, energy, agriculture, fisheries, tourism, environment, and infrastructure. Mainstreaming of the two, of climate change and disaster risk management, because there are a lot of benefits. We can actually um, reduce the waste of resources that we invest uh, separately in the two areas because when you talk climate change and disaster risk management the actions uh, in terms of reducing uh, risks are the same. Um, in the past we've seen a lot of projects uh, where these issues are dealt with separately and many projects are uh, sort of competing for the same resources. Now that uh, the Pacific region has taken a bold move or step to incorporate both and um, that will mean that we'll have a more coordinated approach in how we, we deal with both disasters and climate change. To become more resilient, the framework aims to increase our ability to resist, absorb, accommodate and recover from the effects of a disaster or climate change in a timely and efficient manner. It also means that when we invest in various areas to support our livelihoods and economic development, we have to make sure that we consider um, the risks posed that will be brought about by climate change and disasters in the future so that when those events do happen, our livelihood assets uh, or sources of livelihoods, whether it's in tourism, whether it's in agriculture, uh, and even all the public infrastructure will be prevented from being damaged. Across the Pacific, we are taking steps to address climate change and disaster risks. system <laughs> Uh, cyclone bomb, we have come. Cyclone bomb, we have come. We give him one big fella challenge. Lo, me fella all community. Lo, muna mo bele mo. Hemi na some feedback lo on work we me fella is that time lo make mo me fella i strong. Or me fella i look say no me fella i. Me fella got enough idea lo. You miss have a call lo one. Uh, suppose you have a uh, disaster, you can have a festival, or you have a festival, or festival, or you have a 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 festival. So, what uh, some of our communities are doing with assistance 
from the agricultural department is to plant more salt tolerant food and uh, root crops or vegetables that they can that can withstand um, some disasters or cyclone and would provide uh, probably a food bank for the community to go back and use in instances where food might be of uh, where food might decrease in the community. The framework has three goals. The first goal is to better manage and reduce risks caused by climate change and natural hazards. The second goal is to reduce the carbon footprint of our development. And the third goal is to improve the way we prepare for, respond to, and recover from disasters. The framework provides high-level voluntary guidance to governments, the private sector, civil society and communities, regional organizations, and development partners so they can work more more closely together to achieve these goals. You know, it, it will really eventually uh, decrease the cost of doing business where you have uh, reliance totally on fossil fuel, on imported diesel and so on. Uh, that certainly, you know, uh, is a major cost factor. So, you know, we, we welcome that in the private sector. And I think as building standards, etc., also um, regulations get changed so that we comply and all move down the road of a, of a green economy. This framework calls for an approach that recognizes both human rights and promotes women's involvement in our development. It also looks after the rights of the most vulnerable in our island societies. And I think the approach, the principle around um, uh, multi-sector, multi, uh, um, cross sectors, and, and and inclusion. I think it really ensures that 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 that, that um, measures that are put in place both before and after disaster, or even in response to climate change adaptation, that covers and includes everyone, and everyone is everyone, including us, persons with disabilities. Implementing this framework helps Pacific Island countries achieve their commitments under international agreements. Pacific Island countries and territories, as well as a broad range of stakeholders, were involved in the development of the framework. An online tool also receives submissions from all over the world. Here in our island, we are working towards climate and disaster resilient development. We are taking action in many different sectors. This framework helps us work together to build a resilient future for our islands and for our people.